Do you want to know how to make your Deadpool eyes move in After Effects? Well, today is your lucky day. So if you've stumbled upon this video, I imagine you've been doing a few things. You've either just watched Deadpool and Wolverine, you're about to watch Deadpool and Wolverine, you've watched the Deadpool vs Wolverine fan film from The Lonely Spider, or you're just making a Deadpool fan film yourself and you want to do some cool moving eye effects. This video is of course in partnership with the guys over at The Lonely Spider with their new fan film Deadpool vs Wolverine Charm of Death. I of course did the Deadpool VFX, so without further ado, let me show you guys how to do it. So you're going to want to open up After Effects and bring your footage into the composition. Now, this is is a very simple and basic way of doing this effect so my two biggest pieces of advice would be shoot in the highest quality you can and make sure Deadpool is as face on and still as possible there's some shots in this film where he isn't like that and I have to do some extra tweaking this is just the raw effect so for the best results make sure Deadpool's head is as front on as you can so here's our footage I selected this shot specifically because it is the most head on and still the Deadpool ends up being for the effect so the first thing I did was trim my composition to the actual section of the footage I was using you only need to use the footage where the eyes will actually be moving because the rest of it will just be a footage without an effect. So we have a very clear picture and the black of Deadpool's eyes is very prominent so what we're going to do is we're going to isolate both of the eyes, the full, the full black part. So I'm going to duplicate the layer and then I'm going to freeze frame it so that no matter what happens these eyes are solid. I'm then going to get the mask tool and I'm going to do a rough mask around the eyes. I say rough, I went quite in detail with it. Um, as long as you're getting most of the black then you'll be fine. I also think it's a very good idea to choose a colour that is the furthest away from the thing you're cutting out and the thing in the background of it just so you can really see where those mask points are going. So once both eyes are masked out and you can see that they are crystal clear we are going to pre-compose this entire layer. I'll just name it eyes and then when we go into this pre-composition we are going to change the composition size. Do this by right clicking and pressing composition settings and then we change the size from there. The reason we do this is so that the frame pretty much fits the entire of the eyes. Uh, this can vary. For me it was about 600 by 400 but these can change. I brought up the proportional grid just so I can exactly line this to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the key. Nothing really has to be perfect. I'm also going to feather this out by about 10 pixels each. You guys can do more or less. Now that I'm back in the main composition, I'm just going to realign these with the Deadpool mask. I did this by making the opacity slightly lighter and just trying to line them up the best I could. Once the eyes are in place, I'm then going to make them invisible and import a new null object. This will be for the tracking markers. I'm then going to go to my main footage and I'm going to click motion tracking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on rotation and scale along with the position just so that if his head does rotate in the slightest, the track should still work smoothly. The way I found doing this best was to get the inner corners of each eye and just doing a little tracking marker on each. I tried a version where I tracked the entire eye and there was a couple of glitches along with it's a bigger tracking marker so it takes a bit longer to work anyway so the insides of the eyes work best for me. Once this is tracked you can check it and make sure that it is targeted to null one. We're then going to click apply and everything should be working fine. We then going to get the eyes layer and pick whip it to the null object. This is just to parent them so that the eyes will do exactly what the null is doing. As you can see, it is tracked beautifully. You wouldn't even be able to tell that it's a different layer. We're going to go to our effects panel, we're going to go to distort, and we're going to pick mesh warp. This is where shrinking down the scale of the pre-comp has become very handy because it means that the mesh warp pretty much lands perfectly on top of the eyes. And from this point you have fun with it, you can literally make Deadpool's eyes do whatever you want. This is a very janky and distorted example, uh, just so you guys can see that you can, at this point you can do literally anything with the eyes. So this is obviously the preset row and column selection. Uh, what I typically like to do is I like to add a couple more rows and columns just so that we get as much uh, control over the eye movement as possible. The more rows and columns you have, the more points you have to work with. We're then going to click the stopwatch on distort mesh and we are going to get ready to start animating. Now, I am not an animator. This is actually really easy to do and all of you guys will be able to do it. We're going to place down our first keyframe. We're then going to move ahead a little bit and we're going to change the position of the eyes. Now, this is up to you. You guys can make him look angry, surprised, happy, literally whatever you want. In this first part of the effect, I'm making him do a sort of confused look that you might have seen in the Deadpool vs Wolverine short film. Where did we get this Hugh Jackman mother Wish? What I'll do is I'll click keyframe assist and add an easy ease to the uh, keyframe transitions but I'll also play around with the keyframes right at the end uh, just to you know see what feels smoother, see what feels more natural for Deadpool's eyes. And just like that you have Deadpool looking confused. Now this is a very rough version, you can go a lot more in detail, you can make uh, the expression as big or as small as you like. But once you've got those steps down you can make him do pretty much any emotion. I then went on to make him look angry instead of confused just so you can see how versatile this is. Playing with the keyframes over and over again until I find something that works and is smooth and overall something that I'm happy with. This is your film that you're making this for, I assume anyway. Even if you're doing the VFX for somebody else, there's ways you can play around with it. You can even go super anime with it and make him look very, very shocked. 
And there we have our finished result. Like I said, that's a very basic way of doing it, but if you follow those steps, that is how you can make your Deadpool mask move and emote and express just like Deadpool does in the film. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said, Deadpool vs Wolverine Charm of Death is out now on the Lonely Spider channel. First link in the description, go check it out. Have you guys seen Deadpool and Wolverine yet? As of recording this, I'm going to see it in two days. As of uploading this, I literally saw this the midnight just gone. I hope you guys enjoyed Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, go check out Deadpool vs Wolverine Charm of Death. And if you've enjoyed my company today, be sure to check out the channel. We've got a new Spider-Man fan film coming out called Spider-Man Vendetta, dropping August 8th. Hope you guys check it out. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.